Hi, I'm going to do a, re a video on sets and logic real quick. Just a couple of, of problems similar to what I um, think they mean on the study guide. So with the sets, you need to know the set operations. You need to know intersection. Okay, so this is intersection, union. Okay, and this is the complement of a set. And this is the difference. Okay, so remember that intersection is the and, you need both to be true, and union is really the or, complement is not, and then difference really is this idea of subtraction. So if I gave you the universal set being all the numbers from 1 to 10, then set A is just 2, 4, 7, and 10, and set B would be the numbers 1, I, I may B, um, be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 7, and 9, then A union B would be a set consisting of all the numbers that you see in either set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9, and 10. Okay? You just compile them all. You put all the elements in A together with all the elements in B, and you don't write, you don't need to write them more than once. Okay. Now, the second example I did is a little more complicated because you have the not symbol on B. You have the complement of B. So you might want to go and do the complement of B over here. That means you want all the elements that you see in the universal set that are not in B. So that would be 2, 4, 5, and 6. 7 is in B, so we don't include that. 8, 9 is in B, so we don't include that. And then 10. So that would be the complement of B. And now we want the intersection between set A and the complement of B, those two. So we look for elements in common. This is and, so we got to have things that are in both. Okay, so 2 is in both of them, 4 is in both of them, and 10. Okay. So that answer to that would be the set consisting of 2, 4, and 10, the elements that are in both A and the complement of B at the same time. All right, now for B, the difference of B and A, order matters. So you start with your B set. Let me write that down. The B set is 1, 2, 3, 7, and 9. And then what I'm supposed to do is knock out all the elements that are in that B set, all the elements from B that are in A. So I'm subtracting off the elements of A. So I'm going to take off the 2 because it's in A right here. I'm going to take off the 7 because it's in A. Okay, and then what that leaves me with is my final answer is 1, 3, and 9. Okay, so that type of thing, you need to be able to do those kinds of things. All right, the other objective they mention is analyze set operations with Venn diagrams. So that means they might give you a Venn diagram and they might say, all right, what statement would match that shaded picture? So see how I've shaded everything outside of the circles A and B? So the, that could be this. A union B would give you everything inside the circles and then I want everything outside. So I'm going to do the complement of that. Okay. So that's one. There's other things you could have done for that. But that is one statement that would match that picture. Okay. All right. So you want to be able to do that type of thing as well. All right. And go ahead and look at those problem examples that were given on the study guide. All right. Let's move into the logic. Okay. Both sets and logic were on your first test. So with that one, it's really important that you review the meaning of those in terms of uh, truth tables. So um, we, we look at all the possibilities for P and Q. Okay, so here they are, both true, you know, etc. And what we're going to do is remember that if it's an and, they both must be true. Okay. If it's an or, then only one must be true. 
to be true. If it's a not, you just negate the values. So if P was true to start with, it would be false. If it was false to start with, it's now true. And then the implied one is the harder one. It's about breaking your promise. So if I told you, you if you studied, you'd get an A, you studied and you got an A, then I didn't break my promise. If you studied though, and you didn't get an A, then I broke my promise. If you didn't study and you got an A, the truth value for that would be true because I didn't make any kind of a promise about what would happen if you didn't study. And then if you didn't study and you didn't make an A, then that's also true because again, I didn't make a promise about what would happen if you didn't study. You need to know these. Okay, then you're going to use it in a variety of ways. So you, the objective that says convert a compound statement into symbols and vice versa, I'm doing the reverse of that. What if I had the compound statement, not P and Q? If P was it is sunny, not P would be it is not sunny. get it back to for some reason it's changing from pen okay let me try that again it is not sunny this is and and then I would write it is not oh not 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 it didn't have a not on the cue it is Monday so you might have to like translate from symbols into words or vice versa right so what if we had P implies Q like that? Okay, that would be if it is sunny, then it is Monday. Okay. All right, then another objective they mention is to find the truth value of a compound mathematical, I mean compound statement like that. So if you just want the truth value, then they'll tell you a little bit more. So they'll say, find the truth value if P is true and Q is false or something like that. They'll give you one instance for the P and the Q. So what you do is where there's a P, I'm going to put a true. Where there's a Q, I'm going to put a false. Let me just do it all in green. And not F implies not true okay and then you kind of work it out so not f would be true true and true oh not true would be false okay true and true would be true and true followed by false like that would be false so the truth value of that statement would be false. Okay. Now, instead of just asking you for a truth value, that's all you have to do. If they ask you for a truth value and they give you like an instance, one particular, you know, P is something and Q is something, that's all you do. But if they say to construct a truth table, then that means you have to consider all the possible instances. See, all of these, not just one particular set. But you kind of approach it, right? You approach it a lot of times in the same way. So P would be true, true, false, false. Not Q, I'm looking at my two column, my Q column. Not true would be false, true, false, true. The and of that I would put right here would be false, true, false, false. Because to be true, you need, with an and, you need both to be true, okay? So then hang on to that. Let's go over here to the not P. Not P would be false, false, true, true, okay? So now I wanna look at these two to produce this to, to fill in this column right here. So I'm going to look at these two and see what happens. And that's going to be what I put under the conditional there. So false, 
followed by anything is true. True followed by false would be false. False followed by true would be true because false, if it starts with a false on a conditional, you know it's going to be true at the end because I haven't made a promise to you. So this would be the final answer. And what's probably going to be happening when they give you that problem on the test is you'll have like A and they'll do something like true, true, false, false, B, true, false, true, false, something, you know, things like that. And then you'll have like, all right, what about C? C might be the true, false, true, true. You'll have a D, true, 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 true. You know, all these different possibilities and you're, and you're, there'll be five of them you know, five of them, and then you look for the one that fits, that's true, false, true, true. And they're basing that on the typical setup, right? Okay, for your P and your Q. All right, and then one more thing using a truth table would be to analyze an argument using a truth table. So remember how these right here are your premises, and this is your conclusion. And so you can take your premises the two premises that you had, hook them together with an and, and then see if that implies not Q. And so you need to do a truth table for that. So let me set it up. So I'm going to have a P. I just have P's and Q's, so I just have those two. So true, true, false, false, then true, false, true, false. And then I'll spread this out a little bit so I have room to write and don't get all jumbled up. Okay, kind of think about what you have to do first for each of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. So P is true, true, false, false. Not Q would be false, true, false, true. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the not P, which would be false, false, true, true, and the not Q again, which is false, true, false, true. Okay, but then order of operations comes into play. So now I'm going to do the or using these two. So or, or can be just one of them has to be true. So that's what I would get there. Let me write that better. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to look at these two right here to come up with this one, the and. They have to both be true. So tr true followed by false would be false. True followed by false would be false. False followed by true would be false. And true followed by true would be true. Okay. All right, good. Now let me change colors. Now I'm looking at that together with this, and I'm thinking about the um, conditional, the if-then. So anything with a false I know is true. And then true followed by true is also true. All right, so this right here, okay, all T, so it's a tautology. So the argument is valid. Valid. I'll write it over here. So that's a valid argument. The reasoning is valid. All right, now, you might be asked whether it fits one of the standard argument forms. Um, and it actually does, but I think it would be hard for you to know that. But this is called a disjunctive syllogism. So it's like you're saying P or not Q, one or the other. And it's not P. So that means it has to be not Q. So this actually is a standard argument form. It's the disjunctive syllogism. Disjunctive, not an extra I in there. Okay, disjunctive syllogism. Okay. I wouldn't spend hours trying to learn those different argument forms necessarily, but um, I do believe the multiple choice possibilities might say that it's, you know, it's 
valid and that it fits an argument form or it's valid and it doesn't fit an argument form. So you might miss it because you don't know those argument forms. Okay.